The Busch Series starts off the new season at the Worldwide Center of Racing in Daytona Beach, Florida for the Goodies 300. 42 cars are in this race and there will be 60 laps. Let's kick off the 1989 Busch Series season. Tommy Ellis is on the pole with Ron Moroso starting next to him. Green flag at Daytona. Defending champ Richie Evans jumps from third to first to lead lap one. On the next lap, Samar takes the lead with Grant Adcox to his outside. Elton Sawyer would take the lead a lap later, and back behind them, Ali Ottinger runs into Michael Waltrip and goes sideways, but Ottinger was able to save it. We keep going. Lap 5, Phil Parsons led for a brief moment, but Tommy Houston would take the lead with Grant Adcox following suit. Then coming to lap 7, Bobby Hillen Jr. gets into Michael Waltrip, then comes down into Bobby Hamilton and goes spinning. Hillen keeps going, but there is no caution. Sam Ard then took the lead. Tommy Houston then jumped back to the lead on lap 8. Coming to lap 11, Richie Evans got back out in front. Sam R takes the lead on lap 12 with Billy Standridge looking to pull off an upset. Lap 13, Rob Moroso got a huge push with the lap car Bobby Hillen Jr. to take the lead. Grant Adcox finally found his way to the lead by lap 15. Lots of lead changes early in this one. By lap 17, Rob Moroso was back out in front as he wants to get the maximum points to start a championship run. Tommy Houston charges back to the lead on lap 18. Then on lap 19, Darrell Walter worked his way through the field and took the lead in his own number 35 car. 20 laps in and it's Rob Moroso versus Darrell Walter for the lead. Coming to lap 22, Tommy Houston had a huge push from Richie Evans to take the lead yet again. Then on lap 25, Billy Standridge is up to second as he is trying to make a name for himself, but he would end up pitting shortly after. Lap 27, Darrell Waltrip jumps back into the lead. A lot of leaders are getting huge runs off of turn 4, something to note. On the same lap, Phil Parsons drives too hard into turn 4, running into the 63 of Chuck Bound, putting them both into the wall. On lap 30, Tommy Houston caught back up to take the lead from Darrell Waltrip. Thanks to lap traffic, one lap later, it's three wide for the lead. Darrell Waltrip takes the lead once again. Then on lap 32, Richie Evans from out of nowhere takes the lead. Then by lap 38, Tommy Houston now leads the way with Evans and Moroso behind him. On lap 43, Rob Moroso and other leaders would come down pit road for green flag pit stops as there have been no cautions so far in this one. On lap 46, Richie Evans takes the lead from Rob Moroso, but it wouldn't last long as Moroso took it back on lap 48. With 10 to go, Evans is back out in front. He wants to add his name to the list of drivers who have won at this prestigious racetrack. Coming to 7 to go, Moroso fights back on the outside and takes the lead from Evans. Then coming to 5 to go, Moroso is able to get around a couple lap cars and hold on for the lead. Then Richie Evans got an advantage after Donnie Allison jumps in Rob Moroso's way and he takes off with the lead. But with three to go, Moroso is back and he gets around Evans as they come to two laps to go. And then coming to the white flag, Rob Moroso screwed himself over again with a lapped car and Richie Evans rockets to the lead once more looking to win at Daytona. It's going to take a huge run for Moroso to win this one. It seems like you put this man in a Bush Series car and he is nearly unstoppable despite running part-time this season. Richie Evans is going to win at Daytona. This race had 33 lead changes among 8 different leaders. Here's your top 10. Richie Evans wins. Rob Moroso second. Kenny Wallace third. A great run for him. Jack Ingram fourth. Tommy Houston fifth. Daryl Waltrip sixth. Sam Art finished seventh. Rick Wilson finished 8th, Steve Grissom 9th, and Grant Adcox rounds out the top 10. And thus begins the Bush Series season. The second race of the Bush Series season takes us to the North Carolina Speedway in Rockingham for the Goodwrench 200. 
39 cars have entered, and this race will have 148 laps. Grant Adcox is on the pole with Patty Moy starting in second as we go racing in Rockingham. Coming back around, Adcox would lead lap one. 30 laps in and Adcox jumps out to a three second lead then by lap 51 and after a round of green flag pit stops, Patty Moyes now leads and her winning this race could mean history for this sport. By lap 73, Grant Adcox caught back up to Patty Moyes after she struggled getting through lap traffic. Then a lap later, Grant Adcox takes the lead from Patty Moyes. After a quick caution, the race resumes on lap 89 and Sam Ard is scored as the leader while everyone else is on the tail end of the lead lap. On lap 100, while Ard leads, Patty Moyes is chasing down Grant Adcox for second. Lap 118, trouble for Jamie Albee as his car slows and Grant Adcox runs into him, turning the 41. Adcox had very minimal damage from it, however, and he was able to keep going with no problems. Sam Ard had the whole field lapped at this point as the race restarted on lap 125. Adcox is the only car not a lap down. And from this point on, Sam Ard kicks off his swan song season on a good note, and he will get the win at Rockingham. Sam Ard is your winner. Grant Adcox finished in second. Patty Moyes third. Jack Ingram fourth. Rob Moroso fifth. Tommy Houston sixth. Tommy Ellison seventh. Ellie Ottinger eighth. Richie Evans ninth. And Dale Jarrett rounds out the top ten. The next race on the Bush schedule is the Miller Classic at Martinsville. This race will have 125 laps and 35 cars will be in this one. Grant Adcox gets the pole again with Rick Mass starting second as we go racing at the paperclip. On lap 16, Jeff Burton turns the 47 of Billy Stanridge to bring out the first caution. Later on lap 26, Dale Jarrett loses control going into turn 3 and slides back up on the 75 of Rick Wilson. Ed Barrier also spins to save himself. This will bring out the second caution of the race. Adcox continues to lead on lap 35 with Jimmy Spencer and Sam Ard the top 3. On lap 72, Chuck Bound ends up turning the lap car of Dale Davis, putting him into the 99 of Tommy Ellis. After pit stops, Danny Marshall now leads at the restart with teammate Grant Adcox in second on lap 77. Adcox would retake the lead one lap later. Then a lap 79, L.D. Ottinger spins Danny Marshall as they're battling for position. Marshall is not too pleased with Ottinger. Rob Moroso now leads at the restart on lap 87, and shortly after, Patty Moyes was turned by Tommy Ellis to cause another caution. Moroso went to pit, giving Jimmy Spencer the lead as the next restart comes on lap 94. One lap later, Jimmy Spencer moves the 75 of Rick Wilson. He is not playing around, and that will be another caution. Then Max Presswood goes spinning, and that becomes a pileup. If you want insanity, just do NR2003 at Martinsville. We get another lead change, and this time it's Sam Ard in the lead on the next restart. Tommy Ellis is not making any friends today, and he turns the 34 of Jimmy Spencer on lap 102. My goodness. Things were calm the rest of the way as Sam Ard will pick up another win as he looks to go out with a bang. This race had five lead changes among five different drivers. Sam Ard is your winner, Ellie Oninger second, Tommy Houston third, Rob Moroso in fourth, Grant Adcox finished fifth, Chuck Bound sixth, Mark Martin seventh, Elton Sawyer eighth, Richie Evans ninth, and Bobby Hamilton rounds out the top ten. Here's the first look at the Bush Series standings after three races. Sam Mard holds a 16-point lead over Rob Moroso. Race number four of the season takes us to Hickory for the Mountain Dew 400. 
This race will have 33 cars in it in 125 laps. Rick Mass and Jimmy Spencer on the front row as the Bush Series goes racing at Hickory. Mass would lead the early laps of this race. By lap 19, Richie Evans takes the lead from Rick Mast. Then on lap 26, Rick Mast fights back to take the lead as he and Evans fight lap traffic. At lap 48, Grant Adcox has caught up to the leaders as well as the number 5, that is a car owned by Sam Ard, being driven by a young man named Brandon Baker. A win from him would probably be one of the biggest upsets in recent history. Lap 51, Atcox clears Rick Mast for the lead. Then on lap 69, Rick Mast makes a nice pass by Brad Atcox for the lead, but he has Rob Moroso right behind him. Clean race so far as on lap 76, green flight pit stops were underway. Shortly after, there was a stack up on the backstretch causing Tom Peck to run into Billy Standards, sending Peck spinning. Rick Mass continues to lead at the restart on lap 81, and then the 23-year-old unknown racer, Brandon Baker, in second. Baker then would take the lead on lap 89. Who is this young man? Lap 107, Mass goes three wide to get by Tommy Houston and Danny Marshall, both running a lap down in 12th and 13th. Then on lap 109, Rick Mass takes the lead back from Baker. Then Kenny Wallace, Rusty's younger brother, moves up to second. Then on the final lap, Rick Mass just about lets his guard down. Here comes Kenny Wallace as they are side by side for the win. And coming to the line, it's Rick Mass by a nose. Oh, Mass got so lucky there. Kenny Wallace nearly stole the win. So Rick Mass edges out Kenny Wallace, Brandon Baker with a very impressive finish in third, Ellie Ottinger fourth, Ronald Cooper in fifth, Sam Ard sixth, Grant Adcox in seventh, Richie Evans eighth, Jimmy Spencer ninth, and Jack Ingram rounds out the top ten. Race number five takes us to Darlington Raceway for the County Squire 200. There are 42 cars in this race and there will be 92 laps. Patty Moyes will drive the number 61 for select races to help run a full season. This is the car that is ran by B.R. DeWitt and raced by Richie Evans. And a special thank you to Corvette Racing 48 for painting this car. Grant Adcox is on the pole with Jeff Bodine starting second as we go racing at the Lady in Black. By lap 30, Grant Adcox was leading until this point. Tommy Houston now leads. Then on lap 38, Sam Ard now leads at Darlington. Jack Ingram tries to chase down Ard, but he cannot get past the lap car, and Sam Ard strikes again. This is his final full-time season, and he is going all out. This race had seven lead changes among seven different leaders. Sam Art is your winner, Jack Ingram second, Tommy Houston third, Rick Wilson fourth, Grant Adcox in fifth, Jimmy Spencer sixth, Ronald Cooper seven, Ellie Ottinger eighth, Michael Walter ninth, and Jeff Bodine rounds out the top 10. Our next stop takes us to Bristol Motor Speedway for the Budweiser 200. This race will have 150 laps with 38 cars featured in this one. Kenny Wallace gets the pole with Patty Moy starting in second as we go racing at Bristol. Kenny Wallace led up until lap 35 when Grant Adcox took the lead. Adcox would dominate and on lap 119 there was a round of green flag pit stops. On lap 134, Kenny Wallace snuck around Adcox to take the lead thanks to lap traffic. 
Kenny Wallace would hold off everyone else to go on and get his first career Bush Series win at Bristol. This race had six different lead changes among three different leaders. Kenny Wallace gets the win, Grant Adcox in second, Steve Grissom third, Rick Wilson fourth, Jeff Burton fifth, Ellie Oninger sixth, Jimmy Spencer seventh, Rob Moroso eighth, Tommy Ellis ninth, and Michael Waltrip in tenth. Race number seven takes us to the Nazareth Speedway in Nazareth, Pennsylvania for the GM Parts 300. A quick race, 67 laps, 41 cars in this one. Rob Moroso is on the pole with Bristol winner Kenny Wallace during second as we race at Nazareth. On lap 4, Bobby Hillen Jr. bumps into Dale Jarrett, turning him into Steve Grissom as the 32 goes spinning, and this will bring out the caution. Moroso continues to lead at the restart on lap 9, then on lap 42, Rob Moroso comes down pit road to begin green flag pit stops. Moroso is still leading with 10 to go, but Tommy Ellis is right behind him, separated by the lap car of Danny Marshall. However, Rob Moroso will hold them all off and go on to get his first win of 1989 at Nazareth, a much needed win early on in the season. This race had three lead changes among three different leaders. Rob Moroso wins, Tommy Ellis second, Brandon Baker again finishing in third, Eldie Ottinger fourth, Kenny Wallace fifth, Tommy Houston sixth, Jack Ingram seventh, and here's a surprise finish. I don't know how to pronounce this name, but I'm going to say it's Theory Tassin. From what I looked this up, this was a guy who ran one bush race ever for David Pearson and finished 8th uh, here in this timeline, so who knows, maybe we might hear more of him down the line. Mark Barton in ninth and Chuck Bound in 10th. Alright, the final race we'll cover in part 1 is at South Boston for the Bush 200. 28 cars are in this race and there are 76 laps. Him again, Brandon Baker driving for Sam Ward is the surprise pole sitter as he and Rob Moroso lead the field to the green flag at South Boston. Baker would lead until lap 13 when Kenny Wallace would take over the lead. Then by lap 36, Tommy Ellis led the way with Brandon Baker in second. Fast forward to four laps to go and Grant Adcox has caught up to Ellis and has taken the lead. With that, Grant Adcox will take the Marshall Motors number 85 to victory lane at South Boston. This race had three lead changes among four different drivers. Grant Adcox wins, Tommy Ellis in second, Tommy Houston third, Kenny Wallace fourth, Brandon Baker fifth, Steve Grissom 6th, Rick Mass 7th, Richie Evans 8th, Chuck Bound 9th, and Rob Moroso in 10th. And that concludes the first part of the 1989 season for the NASCAR Bush Series. Thank you guys so much for tuning in and checking things out as there's a look at the final standings real quick. As you can see, Grant Adcox now has a point lead, 46 points over Kenny Wallace. Moroso is back by 47, and then Tommy Hughes and Sam Ard round out the top 5. Still early on in the season and anything can happen. Stay tuned for more Sunday Night Lights action here. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'm Sonicles831 and I will see you in the next video.